The largest scientific collection of brassicas in the UK is housed at Warwick HRI. Brassicas, which are key to the research and development of biofuels, include broccoli, kale and oilseed rape. It's a familiar sight in the English countryside. This field of oilseed rape is just about ready to harvest, and though it's hated by hay fever sufferers, it's being hailed as a biofuel of the future. We think that within, if approached properly, you can get a massive increase in the energy efficiency uh, within biodiesel in particular, which is what we're looking at oilseed rape for, because that's a plant uh, that's used to produce plant oil, and that plant oil produces a very good biodiesel which we can use within your car. People are using the oils that you get from plants now without really considering their, their properties. If you look at the, the composition between say two different oils, so the castor oil here versus linseed oil and eutrophor oil, they all look the same. But if you put those in your car, they perform totally different in what you get in your engine performance in miles per gallon, for example. And that's due to the difference in the composition of the oil. And key to the research is the collaboration you've got going with the engineering and chemistry departments at uh, University of Warwick. We've developed a very good uh, interdisciplinary approach. It took some while to get that going because you have to learn to speak another discipline's language, if you like. Plant biology is only a, a part of the answer. What we need to do is to take the chemist's uh, view of life as well uh, to see how we could actually make slight modification to the oil maybe after we've harvested the oil, in order to again increase the energy efficiency. With that feeds then into engineering there where we're actually looking at the engine performance, we're actually measuring the amount, number of miles per gallon that you get uh, with different oils uh, being fed into the engine. We're looking at how we could modify the engines again to increase the efficiency. And this is being modelled through the Eco One racing car that we've had a great deal of press about recently. Dr. Graham Teekle is part of the team looking at the traits of oilseed rape and also nitrogen use efficiency. One of the big energy inputs into growing oilseed rape is, is the use of nitrogen. So oilseed rape is grown with a high nitrogen input, um, but there's a huge amount of energy is required to actually make the nitrogen fertiliser. So if we can breed plants that have a lower nitrogen um, input requirement to still maintain the maximum yield, then we will be increasing the efficiency with which we can capture the, the energy from um, sunlight um, in, in, in the form of biodiesel. Breeding is a, a very long-term objective, um, typically talking 10, 15 years for a new variety to come on the market, but one of the projects we have at the moment is actually to uh, look at existing varieties and uh, see if any of those can be grown under uh, low nitrogen input conditions and still maintain a high and profitable yield for the farmers. Also, rape doesn't contain much genetic variation compared with, with um, other related brassica species which we've got examples of in here. So we've, these have a huge amount of genetic variation and our research is involved in, in trying to identify um, so how that variation relates to the, the different um, traits or, or phenotypes of the plant that, that we're interested in, such as nitrogen use efficiency or other disease resistance or water use efficiency traits and a number of other uh, different traits. So if we can identify the genes or versions of the genes within these plants, we can then incorporate those into oilseed rape breeding programs and benefit the oilseed rape breeding. Oh, I think we definitely see a massive future required for biofuels in particular, but also for other uh, non-food uses such as uh, bioplastics, biocomposite materials. So the Eco One racing car, the body shell of that was made out of hemp fibre, but also with oilseed resin, uh, oilseed rape oil used for the resin in the plastics bodywork there. And there's a great deal of opportunity. The question is always going to be non-food versus food use of the, of the oilseed uh, crop. But there's a great deal of other opportunities out there now, such as fuel cells that we can tie into anaerobic digestures. Um, we can use uh, these other fuels that we can get from the plant, such as biodiesel or bioethanol. But there's other materials that we can get from the plant as well. And we see this as being a, a, a whole cycle, basically. So we're trying to minimize the amount of carbon produced and maximizing the, uh, the energy return.